Baby mob, it's part two. We're gonna put it together. In part one, we cleaned this, we got everything prepped, and now we're gonna take the gaskets and determine which is going where. Uh, you see that there's a couple of marks to align here. There's one here. Get this thing all sorted out so that it's straight. And you see that this one's up here, so that's gonna go the other side. You got eliminated. No rows for you, bachelor. Uh, wrong crowd, sorry. I'm around women all the time. <laughs> so I just tuck this in. You can see that this aligns with this key mark here. These two line there. And the thing you got to do with these is just make sure that they're in there flush and happy. If they won't stay flush and happy, clean it with brake cleaner. Glue them down. Make them get happy. And you see this right here. It's got these little tabs. Yeah, tabs, bumps, whatever you want to call them. Those actually help, help to hold them in. So on my practice I found that there's a couple of spots where it's coming undone. One was along this surface here and the other was along this one. Part of that's because this is non-compliant. It's been in a box. It wants to be in the box shape, not in the gasket shape. The other problem is I didn't have all the oil cleaned out of the groove. If you have dry metal on dry aluminum, it grips really well. You can see these little bumps, that's what their job is. If you pull these up and they've got oil on them like these had, you can see I wiped it off for the most part, there's still a little on there. Then that's going to lubricate it and make it slip out. You want it to be nice and grippy, like it was brand new fresh aluminum from the factory. That's how they got it to work. Anyway, the other thing that you can do, the last person who did the gaskets on this vehicle, you can tell where they put some adhesive. You can see a little evidence of it right here. Um, you can put that in, especially on this corner here. If you're going to have leaks, it's going to be on these, these three, or on this little surface here. So what a lot of times I'll do is I'll just put the sealant down in there, and then I'll put sealant not on the gasket surface because it'll just get wiped off on the valve train components as it's getting slipped down in there, but I'll put a little bit with my finger uh, on the surface of the head so that when it gets down to it I can stick it on there. One of these got a little bit vandalized when it was coming out. I broke it off just a little because it was just so hard and glued in there. So that was a problem. I was like, no big deal. I keep a bunch of these on hand. Trouble is, the ones that I have are too thick and too small diameter or too thick and too big diameter. I think these are Toyota ones that I've got. I've got more somewhere, but basically I'm just going to reuse these. Before I do anything, I'm going to get all the glue off. And uh, if you try to peel it off or use the gray stuff, it comes off pretty easy. And that way you don't get little pieces of silicone floating around in your engine. That's bad for your oil galleys. That looks decent. Let me get a wire brush, get the rest. What you see is that line down the middle. That's to help grip it. I'm having a little trouble with the brush, so we'll do the pocket knife. Ta da! See, that's good as new. Nothing wrong with that. I use a little brake parts cleaner on a rag. Wipe the top of it. Just run this back and forth a couple of times. This just helps get any oil or whatever off of it so that your gasket material will really bite and stick to it. So, the way this stuff works is you back it off a turn or two. So, you go one, two, and squeeze. Oh, motherless. <sighs> I don't want to go to the parts store. I don't want to go for a drive. I want to wait for them to come. I just want to get the freaking gasket material out. There we go. So you just got to whine and complain about it. Dude, I don't like these ones. I really want to get it in the other kind, and caulking gun kind. So I just want a real little bit. It's going to be a huge pain in the butt for somebody. Okay, quit coming out. That's the other thing is there's no click thing to make it not waste a bunch. You know what I'm going to use this on? I'll tell you what I'll use it on this. Well, I'm going to go stick this in the cylinder head. I'll be right back. How about no? It's like a monkey humping a football. So you can see I've got it sealed in there in place and then I've got it rocked to where it's nice and even. There's another one at the end of this camshaft. That one's next. Here goes round two. That puts a little gasket maker on there. But mostly just rocks it so that it's nice and flat. So if I wind up taking a long time because something goes wrong, 
on assembly of the valve cover gasket. I don't have issue. Now we go around uh, where the spark plug things are. These are a common place to have leak or fail eventually. I don't know how long I'm going to own this car. It might just be forever. You know, you always think you're going to come into money and things are going to keep going better, keep going the way they're going. And you're like, oh, I'll just buy one of those new ones. But sometimes that doesn't happen. Sometimes there's health problems. You never know. So I always just try to go for better <laughs> when I can, if it's my car. If it's somebody else's car and they're being cheap or they don't want to pay for something and I don't want to do it, no big deal. We'll take a shortcut. You want it done how? Exactly. You know, it's like your food. How do you like your steak done? You got it. How much you want to spend on a steak today, sir? You got it. It's kind of how I roll when it comes to auto repair. And oftentimes I just feed, feed people for free. <laughs> I should more than I should. But whatever. It makes me happy. Most of the time. As long as I appreciate it. If, People are really demanding or entitlement folks or like jerks or they don't appreciate it or they badmouth you over some stupid thing later. I don't like that. I don't know anybody that does. Anyway, we're going to take a little gasket maker, put it on my finger. And I'm just going to put a little spot here and there. If you dab, you'll find you make it all the way around. I just want a sticky film to seal it up like a Ziploc bag. It's really annoying for the next guy that has to work on this though. But if it's me, I don't care. This means I won't have to deal with it for a long time. Alright, right through there. I swear I hit oil. I look at my finger. Surely Temple I did. Especially I don't want oil down along the bottom there. And I started using Permatex Right stuff. I was always using it out of the Easy Cheese can. And that's all I knew, but once I found out about the caulking gun ones, dude, you can't go back. Do the control. Control's awesome. Dude, I'm getting sick of this easy cheese can. Takes so long to get it to go, and then once it goes, it won't stop. This is really aggravating. I hate this can. I'm going to use this guy here in my thumb. I'm going to get this right straight parallel to go straight down on it. Sneak it right up in. I'm rubbing on the hose right here. Just hang it, swing it, line it up. Get that hose out of the way. Just land it. Controlling it the whole way, not trying to angle it in, trying to get it in there and straight down. First bolt to go in. You guessed it. It's my pitcher hanger bolt. Get it to slide back and forth. Wherever it sticks in that first little stick. You kind of want to preserve that. You don't want to drag it too far. You suck the gasket out. Smear stuff out of the way. You just want it to just where it lands. It's like you're slapping something in the mud trying to get it to stick. If you're not using all the gasket sealer maker crap like I am, like you probably shouldn't, then you're fine. But if you want to just seal it for keeps, like you're married to the thing, then uh, by all means, slap her in the mud. Nice thing about these get little gaskets is once you get them on there, they grab the bolt from the middle so that when you turn that, the bolt turns with it to a degree. I'm just putting everything in finger tight just so it's stuck on there. And then we're going to start in the middle and work our way out. There's eight bolts on this. The so middle means middle, middle, and then the two down in the sides. Yeah, those new seals really help because they grab the bolt, give you something to grip it by. Got three along the bottom. So I'll take these downstairs with the rag, wipe the bolts off so that they're not greasy or else these won't grip, and we'll get these started. So from the bottom, you just take the bolt, same story, get them started in. I just wiggle them in a circle till they click, and once they click or fall in the hole, you spit, spin them in the rest of the way. And remember, you're not trying to torque this down at this point. Unless it's maybe starting with this one. So we're going to use a ratchet and just get it a little bit snug. Let that be the first of the four. 
The principle with getting a gasket like this to seal well is to get the gasket just settled but not crushed evenly on all eight bolts. Then when you're setting the gasket crush, do the middle four and then the corner four. Start on the center and work your way out or work in opposites. If you've ever heard testicles, spectacles, wallet and watch, that's kind of the way I do it. I do one, two, three, four. Now for the troublemaker one. I can't even do a thing with it until I get the middle one back here torque down at least some so we'll do that first and if it seems like it's tight like I can't get a good shot on it you're right so as I'm tightening these down they go really really easy and then it's like you hit a wall you feel the rubber begin to compress stop like that one just hit it this one you can turn it by hand it's no big deal this isn't even any kind of tightening pattern but then you just, like I say, you feel it just kind of hit the wall. So when you hit the wall, tighten it by hand, stop. And just get them all caught up. Let everybody get together in the little hiking group of bolts. Bottom one's a little bit of a pain, so I stick it on a magnet like this. Just kind of turn as I go in. You just kind of get it down in the corner. Uh, you can remedy this by unbolting the motor mounts. So if you do want to lift the engine, there's a nut right here. And then there's another one on the other side. Super easy to find and get to. You see how they're elongated holes? And the bolts are at an angle, so when you go up, it just goes straight up through that elongated hole. When you want to jack up the engine and transmission together, this is my favorite place to do it. It's basically on the transmission. It's just behind the differential and before the oil pan. You don't want to jack up by the oil pan because you can bend it and shove it into the pickup tube nobody's got time to go fix that I like to support it with a wood block and I do the wood block between the bell housing haha <laughs> I know that seems impossible but I just did it so take hope so I just shove my hand in behind it pull your magnet out you can hear it click in place and then the fun begins just go in like this and just kinda Send it in by hand. Like I say, it's a lot easier if you just pull those two nuts and jack it up. I'm trying to show people that if you're doing it in your apartment complex, you don't have a jack that can do that. You just have your spare tire jack. It'll still work. So I'm just kind of going like this. It's really entertaining. Just keep watching. <laughs> if you want the advanced course, you just use these two fingers here. So the key to these is to have everything tightened down nice and evenly. Ultimately these all bottom out because the bolts have that long flat shank that I forgot to film. And uh, those bottom out on the cylinder head, it ends up crushing. But if you do it in the wrong order then it just doesn't turn out good. The gasket moves or does something funky and it leaks. So for these, you can feel when the metal hits, the, the end of the steel bolt hits the aluminum. and bottoms out where the top of the threads are. So you just want to take it to there. Then I'll do the same thing with this bottom one. Spectacles, testicles, wallet and watch. And then do the ones on the outside. And just like I say with everything, there's more than one way to skin a cat, there's more than one way to do something. Um, but this is what I do with success. And it's based on good principles of starting in the middle and working your way to the outside. So I'm holding it on with my ring finger on my right hand. I'm going to shove it with the index finger or the middle finger. And the thumb. Shove, pull, shove, pull. It's like when you're lowering your line, you know, say you're f fishing off the Bering Islands in Alaska and you let your line down, you just see your line just and then just bump. You know that you hit the bottom. You're resting on something. I feel the same thing. And then I go another sixteenth of a turn or eighth of a turn. So I'll go through and I'll tighten these by hand. Because they'll go a little bit now. Alright, let's see if we can get this hose to get happy here. There we go. Hose is happy. I don't see any clamp on that, but it's snug. 
I will allow it. I'm going to do ignition coils. Remember the long one that we took note of goes to the back one. Don't get any dirt or crud in that open hole. If you can be careful, continue. If not, don't. Mindfulness. Be in the moment. Quiet your mind. As my calculus teacher in college would say, where is your mind? <laughs> If I didn't get it, or if I wasn't listening, or if I was worried about something else, or if I was distracted. Which is easy to do when you're sleep deprived in college. There we go, get the first three threads in, and then you don't have to babysit it anymore. We'll take this one, make sure that you're on your spark plug and not going down the side of it. Can you feel the plug tonight? That sounds dirty. Oh yeah, there we go. Here's a great tip from Paul Morales. If you look at the ignition coil plugs, there's a white one and a black one. The white goes to the front of the vehicle, the black to the back. I think it's gonna be easier to do this one by hand for now. Just wiggle it. If you're finding that you can't wiggle them in by hand, I'm just using my fingertips like this on it. If you can't wiggle them in by hand, pull it back out and clean it with a wire brush some WD-40 or something. I got my finger wedge between the frame and the socket and then I've got my index and my thumb just spinning it in like that. Then your fingers starting to get rattly between the frame and the socket you can get a ratchet. I learned this trick filming one-handed with a camera. You gotta push a button to get it on. But if you lay it that way it pushes on the button for you. Just snug that down. Get down in here. Sure enough, we got enough room. All I'm doing is I'm just running the ratchet back and forth. I just got one finger on it, like that. There you go. So this is glued in, unfortunately. But I just pulled these out. I put this in there. Um, you put it in with it sticking out this way, and then rotate it underneath here. Put your bolts in, and then you just move this side to side. Just pivot it until your bolt clicks in, tighten it down a few threads and then just tighten it. There's a wire retention device here so you just make sure that that's in the back side like it's supposed to be. Um, wrap that around just like that and then go back with a ratchet and then just snug this down. Ideally you just want a new o-ring but I couldn't find one and my valve gasket kit didn't come with one so you do the next best thing you can which is gasket maker. This thing can take a lot of weight if you have the bracket in there where it's supposed to be. You can see that this one's been snapped off right there, the plastic is. So I'm going to line that up the best I can so that it still has some support and just bolt that back in place. It was just flopping around. Somebody forgot to tighten it and then somebody probably leaned on it and broke it. Put it in. I have to pick up a new filler neck with a new o-ring when I get the chance. See how the bracket supports underneath and you can see where it's broken? So as I tighten this down, it looked like it wasn't going to work, it wasn't going to be there. And as you tighten it in, it's just happy to be in its home. You can see they wiggle together so there's some strength there until I get a new one. So what this does is it goes into the AC compressor and it goes, this clicks onto uh, the filler neck. So I know it goes underneath of this cable and underneath this one too. This way everything goes back in the way it was factory. Are we just like huge fanboys of the way the factory did it? Nah, no. I'd change on a whim, you know, if I found something that worked a little better. Uh, but the thing is, is they went to a lot of work engineering this thing so that it didn't fall apart or have problems. So if they already problem solved all these issues that I'm not even aware of because I wasn't there, then why not just follow what they did? and go with what works. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, basically is what I'm saying. Let's lay this in here. Buckle that down. Anyways, when you see a, a cable like that, throttle cable, it's time to replace that. We'll be doing that soon. Nice thing about cables is, you just saw me plug that in, right? Right. Nice thing about cables is that you usually just don't have problems with them, but when you do, there's a lot of warning like that, that something's coming up. What happens there is you get all kinds of moisture in there and it'll rust it out. 
So this is 12 millimeter. Make sure that your battery is not connected when you're doing this because if you get into your intake manifold and this with the battery connected, it's going to spark. Bad for your tools, bad for your car. Don't do it. Battery's disconnected, even just a negative terminal, you're good. So don't over tighten this, just snap stuff. <laughs> I've done it. I, I know this. I've done this. <laughs> See this big hole right here? That's where the washer tank goes. There's a corresponding bump. So you put the bump to the hole. Yeah, all the little 12 year old guys are giggling. He said put the bump to the hole. So we need to have a couple of electrical plugs that make the trip here. Here's the one for the rear washer. Be careful, plastic gets brittle. Here's the one for the front. We'll just take that and get that plugged in before further ado. So those are in, we'll probably put our bump in there. This goes underneath, this goes up over and behind, like that, because they share a bolt. Well, this has lots of room to the battery, this does too. Uh, these could be done at this point, just everything's coming together quick. We've got a white one that goes to the white, and if I remember right, it just goes straight down in there. We've got a green one, it's just going to go in like that. Get those to click, we'll give them a little test tug, make sure that we're not going to have to revisit them right away. Make sure you send them in there by hand first. And by hand could even mean rotating your tool by hand. If you send them in with an impact and cross thread them, it's hard to replace that nut because it's part of the body of the car. It's not to say you can't cut it out and weld a new one in, but geez, that's a lot of work. Save yourself that work by doing a little more work by doing it by hand. To get it started, then zip them home both pretty effective. It's been way over tightened before. Be gentle. I need a new washer fluid tank on this too. Whole car is just kind of getting run down. So I'll click these together first, then click them onto the bracket. You'll be glad. So you just get them close to the engine, line them up, pull them back. Voila, we're in. All right, step number one, you put the tray in. There's an arrow that points which ways to the front. Notice the arrow, put it to the front. There's also a little, you know, tab A, slot B. So just put it in like that. If you get the tray wrong, this thing's going to fight you. Um, also, feel with your finger where the little hook hole is. There's a hole right there. Make sure that you get it there. So that's all good. This one lines up here. Now put your battery in. Double check that your holes still line up with the tabs in the tray. Make sure that you've got everything to where it's not pinned down. And go like this. We've got this little uh, hook this way. Just run that through first. Thread it in and drop it down. There's lots of harder ways to do that. That's the easiest way. Get it down till it hooks and then lift up on this just a little bit. Just keep it hooked and then tighten it down till it meets your battery. This is the easy way. Like I say, there's harder ways to do this. You're welcome to explore those if you need to build character. I am a character, just ask anybody that knows me. Get your other one, you've got your nut on there and it's just finger tight. If it's a little bit too rusty to do this, wire brush it. WD-40 and wire brush. This one really could probably use that, but I'm not going to. Uh, so hold this down, hook it in, drop it. Turn it, hook it. You already lined everything up and your tray's in properly. So this should not be as hard as it's been for me, except I'm not going deep enough. There we go. So once you've done that, spin your nut down. That's why it's handy to have that do that. Get your socket. And snug her down good. Like that. Both sides. It's for keeps now, right? The positive terminal goes on first with the negative undone. And we talked about this in part one, uh, how we don't want the ratchet to touch the positive and anything else with this connected. So we do the positive first. Positive is 
last one off, first one on. So push down on this side when you tighten it and that way it doesn't torque your terminal of your battery and create premature failure. That's amazing, this has the original terminals on it. And it's a 2003. That just blows my mind. Like how does that even work? Sometimes people take care of cars, sometimes they don't. So we go back and do the negative. We're good. I love working on cars. <laughs> it's just fun. It's like doing a puzzle that can take you places. It makes you not have to walk. So if you sneak up on this, just hold part really stable, and do one of these, and then it really goes fast. Hold on to this, because you might need it again someday. <laughs> I like to have one on hand, whether it's for oil, washer fluid, whatever. These are great little containers, they're see-through. Okay, our car is on a Ranger Products Quick Jack, so that's level, so you can check the engine oil. If yours is up on wood blocks or just the front ends up, it's not going to give you a good reading. It's one of the advantages to having cool toys, I suppose. But we're going to pull this up and check the oil. When you check the oil, uh, you want to make sure that it is in a certain range. So the oil is supposed to be between these two. Apparently this got a little overfilled. You do not want to go over this little notch right here. This is operating range. Any higher than this, your crankshaft's going to be whipping on it. That makes it frothy with air bubbles. Air bubbles do not protect an engine as well as oil does. Okay, on our second dip we can see we're at the top one. Apparently I'm just like not doing a good job dipping this. It's just really stained. All right, we'll check one more time, and we're below the dot, so we're right in operating range. That first one had me worried. I'm like, dude, I did the oil change on this. I know it shouldn't be that high. I know better. All right, these little jacks are sweet, man. They hold it level for you. They're just, they don't have to have anything drilled in the concrete. They're just sweet. Just love them. Let's go back up. I just realized I gotta see the axle to do. Do it. This is in real time too. That's not bad. You don't have a long way to go either. You set it on the locks and then you know you can rock the car all you want. It's not going anywhere. I think it's just solid. I mean when it bears down there's a bow in the bottom. It just takes the bow out and just it's solid. Awesome. This was fun. Thanks for, uh, thanks for coming along and doing this. Uh, if it helped you out, be sure to subscribe. If you want to see more good Subaru videos, I've got a bunch to come, especially in the immediate soon future. So click that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything. And uh, we'll hang out. We'll do this again. Cheers. Bonus footage at the end. It's the next day, but I still have that oil smell, like pretty severely. So as I look at it, I didn't clean up in here very well, but that's not it. It's distinctly oil smell. It's not from the CV axle. On this side, the one that we did, it's not leaking anymore, but I didn't really clean it that well, but it's not getting on the exhaust, so it's not from here. But when I look up from this side, I can see significant oil leaks coming from there. You can't really see around the exhaust, but you can sure see it on the exhaust. So the valve cover gasket on this side, or possibly a head gasket, is leaking. We have a special mail call. Uh, this is special for a couple reasons. One, it's from another hemisphere of the world on the other side of the world. But it's also something with a backstory which makes it fun. This plate comes to us from Robert Pierce from Victoria, Australia. And as you look at it, you see it's got the Vic for Victoria. And this thing's been there, done that. The letter goes as follows. I'll zoom in and you can key in on it more if you like. Uh, but basically this is from his old Massey Ferguson TEA tractor. I guess the A is for if it's an Australia one. This one was from somewhere between 1947 and 1956 which means it was one of the first Massey Ferguson tractors. See, uh, it says Harry Ferguson Limited and then it's got the little A stamp for Australia and there's the plate number on the tractor and here we have it here. Uh, but he goes on to say that he's the third owner and it's still going strong although I've just got the baby tractor but it's got a big heart picture below so that's the new tractor he got. He says thank you for your how to fix things videos they're wonderful and even if it's not a topic that I'm particularly interested in I watch and learn it's helped me to be a more adventurous home mechanic. That's awesome way to go man. 
A few months ago I stripped the front end of the TEA-20 and rebuilt the front axle, pin, wheel bearings, radiator and fan, straightened the bent steering rod and rebuilt the hinge pivots on the hood. Really satisfying and probably saved me over a thousand bucks in labor. I love hearing that. Dude, if you've saved yourself a thousand bucks on something and got it done right yourself, that's a tough feeling to, to top. That just is, there's a word for that. It's called efficacy. Uh, it says, in our house we have a saying, keep up the good work. So Brian, keep up the good work. Kind regards, Rob Pierce, Victoria, Australia. So that's his new tractor right there. If I set it down, you can see it better. You can see where he did the new pins for the steering. And the collar, he's got the little captions and stuff. How cool is that? That's awesome. So they got a little different uh, exhaust that it doesn't burn the gas for Australia, grass for Australia. Here it is with the front end all torn down. You can see the engine uh, firewall right there. And then looking through, ooh, that is bent. Look at that. And then there it is all finished and getting back to work. Dude, that is a feeling that just gives you a ton of satisfaction. Thanks, Robert. Really appreciate you sending that to me. Um, he spent 20 bucks to get this shipped to me, and it's something obviously that he cared about. And uh, I'm really proud to have that as part of the collection. Thank you very much.